What is up? My name is Romy Pruitt. I'm a software engineer at a Fang company. And today we are talking about the new model that's being used as a game engine. Can you imagine a world in the future where we have AI able to replicate the world of Grand Theft Auto, not from the source code, but merely from playing it? It's able to do this from reading, using AI agents, as well as a model for predicting the next pixel, the fusion models. If you've seen the text to video models, then you will understand a little bit about that. And so, yeah, what is the agent? What are these new things that are taking over the programming world? Well, you can think of an agent Similarly, like we have small building blocks that we use in order to in order to run code like lambdas. Consider these lambdas that are capable of planning and executing things based upon that plan. It'll come up with a plan and it will come with it. You can see agents in systems like the Roomba. If you've seen the little vacuum things, they come up with a plan on how to clean your house. And they start by going, picking up and figuring out where the wall is. Once they hit the wall, they realize, hey, we hit the wall. Let's make a new plan to cover a different area. And you can even see multi-agenic systems. If you've seen multiple Roombas in a place, they can coordinate together where one is a leader. They're coming up with a plan on how to disperse these different agents. Or if you've seen Red Dead Redemption in the system, and this system is another example of how agents work, where all the different NPCs, they come up with a plan. Maybe the plan is to go fishing, come back, sell it. There's another agent that is, let me come, let me stay at the store all day and night and figure out how do I make a mark up on trading goods. This is an example of agentic systems. And so hopefully with that context, we're able to get into this article and figure out exactly what is, how do they go about it? So yeah, I like that. And we're gonna go to game engine. So, and let's get a close up. We like the oh, what? Um, let me make sure you guys are still good. Yeah, it looks good. All right, just get a close up. The fusion models are real time game engines. Google research, tell ad, Google DeepMind. So yeah, Google DeepMind is kind of the place with all the different machine learning things in Google. So yeah, just looking at this game, what's astounding to me is that how much of the game can it play? You know, how are these enemies showing up? How much do they have to spend in order to make this stuff? Real-time recordings of people playing the game Doom, simulated entirely by Game Engine Neural Model. We present Game Engine, the first Game Engine abstract powered entirely by our neural model that enables real-time interaction with a complex environment over long trajectories at high quality. Game engine <laughs> can interactively stimulate, let me see if I can give you guys a mouse, there we go, can interactively simulate the classic game Doom at over 20 frames per second on a single TPU. I've heard something that like renting a TPU for an hour is like three grand. It's insane. Next frame prediction achieved as PSN hour of 29.4, comparable to lossy JPEG compression. Human raiders are slightly than random chance at distinguishing the short clips of the game from clips of the simulation. Game engine is trained in two phases, a recursive, I guess, recursive something agent learned to play the game and the training sessions are recorded and two, a diffusion model is trained to produce the next frame. Conditions on the sequence of the past frames and actions, conditions 
uh, frames and actions, conditions, augmentations, enable stable autoregressive generation over long trajectories. So yeah, looking at the game. Oh, they even got weapons showing up. I wonder how much of this game, it seems like you would have to play the game for an extremely long time in order to pick up all the nuances inside of the of the game like they got the barrels they got the toxic wakes and his health is going down they got dudes showing up i do think the graphics don't look that good but i don't know if that's comparable to what it actually is like you see they got this like little face twitching right here which is interesting, like his eyebrows or whatever. Like you can see a little bit of the pixels. I guess the bullets not coordinating correctly. But yeah, this is insane to think about. So I guess here's the architecture. Yeah, so one agent is learning how to play the game and like recording the frames and then the diffusion model. We're seeing the diffusion model be good enough to be able to recreate once uh, 60 second videos with chat GPT Cora. I'm really excited to see some of that stuff. I really want to animate some of my videos in a way that is better for learning and more digestible. So keep on the lookout for that. Data collection via agent play. Since we cannot collect human gameplay at scale, and in the first case, we trained on an automatic RL agent to play the game, persisting as training episodes of actions and observations, which became the training data for our generative model. I wonder if the agent is supposed to just kind of like the room, the Roomba, I don't even know what that's called, the vacuum, the little vacuum Roomba thing. It's kind of similar to that where you just like search and figure out the limits and bounds of the game. Then you have training on the generative diffusion model. We repurpose a small diffusion model, stable diffusion, 1.4, condition a sequence of previous actions and observation. To mitigate autoregression drift during inference, we corrupt context frames by adding Gaussian noise to include, to encode frames during training. This allows the network to correct information sampled in previous frames. We found it to be critical for, for preserving visual stability over long time periods, latent decoder and fine tuning. The pre-trained auto encoder of stable diffusion 1.4, which compresses eight by eight pixel patches into four latent channels, resulting in meaningful artifacts when predicting game frames, which affects small details and particularly the bottom of the bar hub. To leverage the pre-trained knowledge while improving image quality, we train the decoder on the latent encoder using an MSC loss computed against a large target frame pixel. And I guess that's it. Yeah, I'm not going to read the research paper for you guys, but I really thought this was cool and I'm really excited to see how this is going to be used in actual business. <laughs> Maybe we'll see people ripping people off, just like how you can still pay-per-views online. Like maybe you'll have a, a AI uh, emulator bootleg game in the future. But yeah, it's, it's exciting work. I don't know what other applications that can be used from this, but I thought it was really cool. Let's see what you guys thought about it. <laughs> esports, let me get a close up back on myself. Esports and game terms are going to be rigged by AI, you think? I do think, you know, if you guys are following chess, if you guys are following chess, you will see that there is this existential threat that some players are cheating and we don't know how to catch them. So if you can imagine if the AI is getting so much better that it's hard to detect cheaters, it'll be really, it, it almost destroys the fun of the game. Like you, you labbing something out so much that there's no, there's just one correct way to do it has made the game less creative 
and less enjoyable for everybody. And so it is quite sad. I think there will be more cheating and maybe in the future we will have more more ways to detect when some a human being is lying to by AI. Um, yeah, it's just hard. It's hard to predict. I think I'm not too worried. I like to take one day at a time. And if I ever get to a point where some of the things I love get boring because of that, then uh, it is what it is. Hope that answers your questions. You can run a TPU on GCP. Yep, that's cool. It's like if you have the knowledge and the experience, you can start, you can do your own AI training with these computers. And so would I, even if you had a small budget, just wanted to see how much could I get, how much of that game could I emulate with just like $300? I think that'd be a really cool project. And maybe, hopefully, I wonder sometimes that AWS is going to create things that make it easier for programmers or if we're just AI, AI auto-generate is going to be a lot easier for creating some of these projects for us. And we hear you good. Let me see. Online tournament. Oh, yeah, yeah. Online tournaments. Going back to that question about experts going to tournaments. Yeah, I, I, we're definitely probably going to see more video cameras of people and have more stringent, uh, probably be more stringent. What is the word? more stringent checking for cheating measures in the future. But I think it's possible. You know, we just got to adapt with the times. Um, I think we'll eventually be able to detect, but if it launched in the next few months, it will be not be detectable. Yeah, I think we're going to go through many weird, many errors of us having AI. Um, people take advantage of AI and us finding ways to counteract that so that we can still enjoy games like chess or fighting games or whatever. But yeah, once we see how the AI, actually, I don't know, like if you guys have seen chess and you've seen how computers play against each other, sometimes they'll come up with moves that are so beyond human understanding that it inspires more beautiful games like in chess i don't know if you guys know but generally it's really recommended that you castle for defense and so we've seen people like magnus carlson leave their king in the center of the board and still win and he says, because we've seen AI do it and win games like that, we understand that maybe it's not as bad as we thought to do that. And so it's inspiring us to take more risk, which is beautiful. Even though the game of chess has gotten more boring because of AI, I think at the highest levels of chess, there is still us needing to take a risk. So still a lot of beauty in, a, in the chess games of the day, even though most players are studying via the computer. And have you seen the volunteers? <laughs> All right, I'm going to end the video there, but let me guys know, are you excited to see AI create video games in the future? Or do you feel like this is going to destroy the gaming industry?